Hello everyone! You are watching Breakfast at Tracy's and we have been diving headlong into the toughest passages of the Bible in order to gain confidence not just in our faith but in our ability to tell others the good news about Jesus. We believe that all of the world's problems are solved in Jesus, in his kingly leadership. And so we need to be confident in urgently relaying the gospel to others. Many people have objections to varying things in the Bible, often because they don't understand the greater context, and that is what we are continually addressing in this series. Here is something that Jesus said. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Wait, did Jesus just promise to become our magic genie with unlimited wishes? A lot of people interpret it like that, but they shouldn't, and here's why. First, God will not give us anything. Some things are impossible for God to give, like making us God. So already we see Jesus is not opening the unlimited floodgate here. Second, even in this passage, conditions are placed by Jesus, as he mentions in the very next verse, the necessity to forgive first. In other passages, it is mentioned that we must continue to abide in him, in John 15, 7, and that we not ask for things uh, for our own pleasure, in James 4, 3. Our experience alone tells us that either Jesus was lying to us, or we are misinterpreting him because we know God doesn't grant our every prayer. Imagine a world where he did. Imagine the chaos. God is not a vending machine where we put in virtue and get out miracles. There are even prayers that were given a no in the New Testament. For example, Paul was not healed after praying three times about it, and he couldn't appear to heal Epaphroditus or Trophimus. The key here is to look at it just like Jesus' command to love our enemies or turn the other cheek or never look at someone with lust. These are only possible when our will is completely in line with God's. John tells us that our prayers are granted when we are so aligned with God's will, filled with the Spirit, that we find ourselves praying according to His direction, according to what he wants. As one pastor put it, God will only give you what you would have asked for if you knew everything he knows. I'll say it again. God will only give you what you would have asked for if you knew everything he knows. We only think we know what is best in each situation. Prayer is about relationship, and the more we love God, the more we want what He wants. We do this in all loving relationships. The more we love, the more we lay down what we want. So in prayer, we lovingly surrender our limited knowledge of what we think is best to His unlimited knowledge of what He wants, which is what He knows is best. When we live this way, when we pray this way, when we are in relationship with him this way, he grants whatever we ask because we ask for what he tells us is best and we trust him in it. This brings up a, uh, this brings up a, a follow-up question. Then is there any point in asking for what we want? Of course, God encourages us to do so, but we cannot assume that God must grant what we want. He makes no such promises. Powerful and effective prayer is, through relationship with him, aligned with what he knows is best, and God lovingly responds to our prayers when they fit with his overall will for our lives. It is clear that Jesus never intended his words to be taken as a proposal to become a miracle dispensary for our every whim, because even though his followers heard these words, recorded these words, and taught these words of Jesus, 
There is no record of them being bewildered by God not giving them whatever they asked for. They had no such expectations because they didn't interpret Jesus in this narcissistic way. Effective prayer is about aligning with his wise reign as king. As Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to trust you so much that we allow you to direct even our prayers, our desires, and our thoughts to run parallel with yours. Help us to not treat prayer like you are ob obligated every time we open our mouths. You are all-knowing, and we, in comparison, know nothing. Humble us in our prayers, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. I hope to see you again tomorrow as we continue on in our series, The Bible Says What? See you then.